Brother lads, welcome back to the Kwasi Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kwasi. Welcome back to a brand new video. This is the latest Arsenal news and transfer news as well. Sporting Lisbon have dropped the price on Victor Jokeres to 80 million euros. That's around 72 million pounds. However, for Arsenal, a deal still depends on Edin Ketia's departure. If Olympic Marseille or any other team can sign Edin Ketia, then we will sign Victor Jokeres. But if Eddie stays, then Jokeres does not head over to the Emirates Stadium. Arsenal are set for a transfer battle on two fronts next week with FC Barcelona ready to sign Nico Williams next week according to Fabrizio Romano and also Baka are trying to sign Mikel Moreno next week as well so if Arsenal are going to try to stop Baka on any of those players or both of them it's going to be next week with Bilbao saying any offers for the player any tra uh, any transfer deals for the player must happen before August Fast. We're going to be diving into that as well. We'll talk about Desire Due, one of the other wingers that Arsenal are interested in. Possibly, if we don't get Nico Williams, Desire Due Atrene is another player Arsenal have been eyeing all summer. And of course, this one is wanted by Bayern and also by PSG. It's not an easy market, like for, like Mikel Atta said. It's a market that uh, has taken uh, Arsenal by surprise. And I think you can see what's going on. It's a very, very difficult market. It's a very strange market. But Mikela said they are still very, very dedicated to getting things done and to improving the squad as well. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Yep, let's get into it. So let's start off with that Mikela Teta disclaimer. Uh, you know, he's come out and said, uh, look, li listen, the market has become very, very difficult for us. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not been as easy as it was in the past. He says it's a little bit slower. And clubs are a little bit different, but we are still dedicated to go and do the deals. We are still dedicated to improve the uh, to improving this squad. Now, according to news coming from insider sources, Arsenal are also keeping their um, cards closer to their chest. I reported about this. I just wanted to say it again. Arsenal are not releasing information about many of their deals. There are deals that we are really, um, you know, in the know about. For example, uh, the Mikel Moreno deal, the Nico Williams deal, the Ricardo Calafiori deal. But there are some other deals that Arsenal are preferring to keep their cards closer to the chest rather than revealing all information out there. So Mikel says it's a difficult market, but we will improve. We are adjusting slowly but surely, and things are moving in the right direction. Okay, let's start off with the Sporting Lisbon story then. Uh, Sporting Lisbon have dropped the asking price of their player, Victor Jokeres, apparently, from 100 million euros to 80 million euros. That means that uh, the price has dropped by uh, 20 million euros. Uh, that would be very, very encouraging for anyone who's interested in signing uh, Victor Jokeres because the initial th feeling... And, uh, and the initial thought around the market was that Victor Jokeres is overpriced and overrated. And clubs didn't want to sign him because they, th they, they kind of felt like he's a 26-year-old that has played two seasons at the top, one in the championship, one in the Portuguese Liga. To buy him for 100 million, that's a little bit, um, you know, overpriced. Uh, you know, pr priced. That's a little bit of an overpay. So Sporting Lisbon have decided to drop their asking price for the player to 80 million euros. However, still against for Arsenal, for, for, for us, I think the problem with Arsenal's move for a striker is not basically the money, it's not basically the character and all these excuses that we are being given because apparently... Man United are very much interested in signing Ivan Tony, And we were told that Mikel Arta doesn't like Tony because of his character. I think um, Eric Ten Hag is a disciplinarian. I think Mikel Arteta is a disciplinarian as well. So if Mikel Arteta looks at some things in, um, uh, you know, in, in, in Ivan Tony uh, and his character and they are not good, I don't think Manchester United easily go for such a player. So I think with Arsenal's striker pursuit, it's about movement on the forward line who is getting out right are we able to get out at least two players on that line maybe Gabriel Jesus goes maybe Edin Ketia goes and then we can see Arsenal uh, sign a number nine otherwise it's still going to be very difficult I still I still see it as um an area where Arsenal don't view it as a priority I mean the Athletic have said Arsenal don't even consider it a big priority. They would rather sign a young striker and look into that direction rather than go and getting, uh, going and getting a player that is proven a proven goal scorer. So with your current price dropping, I, I think Arsenal will look there, honestly. I think um, we already have the information. And I think Arsenal knew right from day one that this price was going to drop. There was no way 
any club was going to come and look at Osimen, uh, you know, he's costing 100 million, and then look at Jokaris as well, uh, and Jokaris is also costing 100 million euros. There was no way. So I knew there was going to be a price drop either on Victor Jokaris or on uh, Victor Osimen or both of them. And I think we are still going to see, uh, you know, bigger drops. We'll see a bigger drop in, in Victor Jokaris. We'll see a bigger drop in, in the Osimen one as well. Um, for me, I, I agree with Arsenal. This one, you've got to offload Edin Ketia. It doesn't make sense for you to have four strikers that, uh, and three of them are lame. Kai is a lame striker. Gabriel Jesus, no sensical lame striker. Uh, and Edin Ketia, surplus requirements. You've got to get rid of, of, uh, rid of all of them. And you bring in a player that you are ready to invest money in and also invest time in as well. So I think um, Eddie will leave at some point in time. And we might not sign a striker this summer, but the next summer, Gabriel Jesus leaves and then Arsenal sign a striker. I kind of see that how uh, 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 th that is how uh, things are actually going to happen. But let's wait and see. The price drops. Um, let's see if other clubs will come in and try and jump onto that opportunity. Now, the next big story, Fabrizio Romano has just confirmed that next week, this, uh, the stage is set. It is time to fight. It's going to be round one between Barcelona and Arsenal for Nico Williams. And of course, we expect another round two between Barcelona and and Arsenal for Mikel Moreno. The reason as to why the Nico Williams deal is going to be round one is because, according to Fabrizio, uh, there is a deadline, right? There's a deadline for this deal to happen, and it should be August 1st. Bilbao are saying if any clubs are going to come in after August 1st for Nico Williams, th they're going to call him back for training, and he will not leave this, uh, the club this summer. He will leave the club next summer or even uh, you know, in, the, in the transfers to follow. So that means that Barcelona have an ultimatum. That means Arsenal have an ultimatum too. But what is interesting from Fabrizio is that um, Barca have decided that next week after the Euros this weekend, next week is when they're going to try to get this deal done. This is when they're going to try to sign Nico Williams come what may so Arsenal have to be prepared to be prepared and anyone interested in Nico Williams as well has to be prepared the president at Barcelona feels like uh, they have an upper advantage in this deal they feel like they have the money they feel like they have um uh you know the, the wages to pay the player so everything is going to be in the right direction can Arsenal really battle Barcelona on this one yes we can financially I think we can uh, but in terms of personal terms, interest of the player, and uh, you know who's the player's priority, I think Baka are, are ahead at the moment, right? If Baka fail to agree terms with the player, maybe, and maybe terms with Bilbao, that is what Arsenal come in. The, the, the one thing I like about this is that next week, we are going to know the whole outcome of this deal. And I think it's going to be Barcelona sign Nico Williams, and Arsenal look elsewhere, and Arsenal look somewhere else. Maybe to a new winger, maybe to a new forward, maybe to someone who can play as a forward, as a winger, um, and as a midfielder. It will depend. But at the moment, Fabrizio is reporting that we are going to have a uh, two-way voltage between Arsenal and Barcelona next week, as Nico Williams deal is going to be decided next week, and Baka are preparing their official office. Arsenal at the moment are still very quiet. This is a deal that um, yes, there is interest. The Athletic keep on reporting that he's um, you know, Arsenal's priority, but there is nothing, right? There is nothing in terms of um, are Arsenal going to sign him now? Are they going to sign him um, next week? Are they going to sign him in August? What is the plan? We don't know what Arsenal's plan is for Nico Williams, but at least we know what Baka's plan is. So if Arsenal's plan does not shift next week, then we are out of the deal. It's as simple as that. If it shifts, it shifts to the next week, then we have a transfer battle to watch. Baka versus um, uh, Baka versus Arsenal. Now again, there is um, another interesting part that uh, Baka might also try to sign Mikel Marino from Real Sociedad next week. I don't think. Barcelona are going to financially afford those two lads. I think Baka will afford Nico Williams. Top priority. He's their focus. And uh, the manager, Hansi Flick, 
is saying give me nico williams so i don't think they will afford both of them because nico will cost them 58 million euros if they can negotiate that and um uh, try to change the structure of the deal well and good for them but if they're going to pay it once in you know in one installment or in two installments that might be a little bit difficult right that might be a little bit difficult and i think laporta talked about th that as well so i think them getting nico williams is easy as uh, you know stealing cheese from a baby but also arsenal getting michael moreno ahead of barcelona becomes easier i don't think baka afford both of them arsenal could afford both of them but i don't think baka will afford both of them they've got to make a lot of uh, you know financial room to sign nico williams and i still think that they will try to sign nico before making significant sales right so next week we wait we wait to see what happens out of there are we going to see blowjobs blowjobs are we going to see how are they called um uh jabs right are we going to see jabs jesus christ um are we going to see jabs or are we going to see knockouts next week uh, next week uh on those two players we wait and see now uh fabrizio romano says that desire Dewey has kept his options all open for his future decision will be made in the next days paris saint germain are expected uh, to enter the race with a formal offer bayern who had a first bid rejected uh, but are planning to go again to rene and we don't have any formal bids from uh, premier league yet now there are two premier league clubs interested in desire Dewey. one is arsenal the other, of course, you guessed it right, Chelsea. Chelsea are also interested uh, in signing Desire Doe. His valuation is a little bit, for me, um, stingy. Like, doesn't it, it, it doesn't come off very well for me. He's valued at around 45 million euros. And the fact that there is a PSG there, who have missed out on Ryan Sharkey, go, who has gone to Dortmund, and the fact there is also another, uh, you know, juggernaut in Bayern, that deal might be a little bit expensive it might be a little bit uh you know over exaggerated so i think arsenal's interest in desire do would have been consolidated if we were the only club interested or maybe not the only club interested if the deal was to be done around 35 to 38 million euros but this is a deal that we expect to be done at around 45 million euros i don't see arsenal competing with bayern with psg with chelsea those are guys that are really ready to spend the cash. Like P B PSG, they are hungry to replace Kylian Mbappe. Bayern, they are hungry to replace what they lost last season um, in, in on all fronts, Champions League, Bundesliga, uh, DFB Pokal, and all the others. So it's gonna be very, very interesting how it happens, right? It's gonna be very interesting how that deal happens, but I just wanted to give you an update on that desire Doe deal. Now, Arsenal want to sign three goalkeepers this month three goalkeepers tommy bentley and Garcia. i'll give you an update on all each and, and, and on each and uh, 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 every one of them uh on bentley arsenal of course we took in our first bid you know i don't want to repeat that it was rejected arsenal planning their second bid but most importantly he might be the first signing that comes in in terms of the goalkeeping range of goalkeepers that we are looking at apart from david dry obviously so i think bentley is going to be the goalkeeper that represents in um precision i don't see any of the other goalkeepers coming and straight away walk into precision i think it's going to be dan bentley coming in from wolverhampton Wanderers and then play for precision uh represent arsenal uh, in precision then raya will come back for the first day of um of the season so that is a deal I, I, I would keep my eyes on if i was interested in goalkeepers and goalkeeping situations at a club like arsenal that change goalkeepers every single season the second goalkeeper is tommy setford now tommy setford arsenal sent in their initial offer of around three hundred and fifty thousand um pounds to ix negotiations are still ongoing i am not really sure why our negotiations like we bid we enter negotiations disappear like that's what's happening calafiori bid enter negotiations disappear tony setford bid enter negotiations disappear dan bentley bid enter negotiations disappear 
that is uh, that is the theme of our transfer window maybe things are actually becoming as difficult as Mikel Arteta was actually saying but Tommy Setford is uh, only 20 18 years of age is he 18 or 20 is 18 playing for the England uh, under 20 Arsenal uh, view him as a top talent Ajax also so we might have to pay a little bit higher than 400,000 pounds to get the services of that young man the third goalkeeper is um Joan Garcia. Joan Garcia has been voted uh, inside Arsenal as the next player to take on the Aaron Ramsdale position. So we might see the shot number one go to Raya, and we might see shot number two go uh, to Joan Garcia. We might have two Spaniard goalkeepers, Spanish goalkeepers, um, in our Arsenal, which is quite very, very interesting, by the way. Now, that also means, listen, that also means that Ramsdale's, uh, Ramsdale's future at Arsenal is pretty much um, has, has pretty much been decided because the goalkeeper Ineki Kena at Arsenal is 100% sure that John Garcia, Dan Bentley, and David Dreyer that should be the, the the goalkeeping three at Arsenal next season. So with Ram, I think it's pretty much done. 